Hiya folks, welcome back. It's Will here back once again for another Fight Card Prediction. We are going to be breaking down UFC Fight Night 96 from the Moda Centre in Portland, Oregon. As John Lineker faces off against John the Magician Dodson in your main event. That's a great main event. Um, with some fighters throughout the card, I'm looking forward to seeing Will Brooks. Looking forward to seeing him again. Louis Smolka, one of the hottest rising talents in the, the flyweight division. Um, and then there's a few others I'm kind of looking forward to seeing, but nothing too much. Um... Okay for a fight night card, but I say that they're kind of cramming in quite a lot of, of cards here recently. Uh, so maybe losing one or two of these fights and putting them on other cards wouldn't be too big of a miss. But um, we'll get into that in a second. Just want to thank all the new subscribers. I've gained about 50 new subscribers in the last uh, month or so. Um, welcome, to the sh uh, welcome to the breakdowns. Come and leave your comments in the drop down box below. Uh, and let me know your picks for the fights there. If we can like and share and subscribe these picks... Um, that would be fantastic. Let's go out and do that. Um, as always, there is a host of people you should go follow. Watch their content during fight week. Um, Dan Levy, bestfightpicks.com. Get his betting picks on there. Half the battle. Great, great breakdowns of the fights. Great interviews with the fighters. Rock stars. I, I, I say the same people all the time, but these are the people I watch in fight week. I think you should too. Rock stars. Um, great quick picks. Um and um, someone who's going to come into it a little bit more with for these change of work hours so you might get a little bit more from them there um severe mma they they do just great work across here over uh, over in ireland here and the uk branching out a little bit they've got the best podcast over here in europe with talking brawls and alongside them as well bookie beatdown just an essential every week um show that you have to to, to check out for for your fights for DraftKings purposes as well um flying brian makes some just great content. There's MMA Kelton out there who's making them. Brandon Kaplan makes great videos. He's his is out already. Um, so go show your support for the, those guys. James Lynch is another guy that I could throw in there um, with the Part and Shot podcast with his interviews. So please check them out if you can. Um, you'll find them all on YouTube here. So go and do that. So let's get into this card. Starting off in the women's bantamweight division if we have Kelly Fassholtz against Ketlin Vera. Ketlin Vera is a newcomer here to the UFC, a 6-0 record fighting out of Manaus in Brazil. And from what I've seen of her, uh, nothing that kind of really stands out in her last fight. She she was facing a girl who was superiorly, superiorly, superiorly under, undersized against her here. Um, and she was a big, big girl against her. Uh, probably a good 20 pounds bigger than what she was due, uh, at fight time. Uh, and she used a lot of her striking techniques in that fight, which was different from what I've seen in fights before because she kind of used the ground game to her advantage in that one there and uh, won the fights through there. Very kind of blanket and fighter. Once she gets you down there, she'll move. Uh, she'll transition to different spots very, very easily. But she will be getting a step up an opponent here in Kelly Fassholtz, who I was thoroughly impressed with in her UFC debut. debut. Came in in short notice against Lauren Murphy, who is a, a very tough out in that women's bantamweight division. And she came in there, showed some really crisp boxing technique, some nice straight shots. And uh, the only thing that really let her down in that fight was her gas tank. Now, she was coming in in short notice, and against somebody who's grimy, and then getting your uh, and somebody who gets in your face as much as Lauren Murphy does, that was a tough, tough fight there, a tough out. And she, she got stopped there late in the, the third round, I think it was about 15 seconds left in the fight. I like Kelly Fatsholz in this one. Not confident in the pick really because there's not much to see in these girls. My pick will be Kelly Fatsholz. It will be via decision. Heavyweight division. Cody East against Curtis Blades. A fight I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing because uh, we do need new blood in that UFC uh, heavyweight division. These are two guys coming in here in their second fight in the UFC. Cody East coming off that loss to Walt Harris at uh, UFC 197 which I was there. Got off some really nice shots against Walt Harris, uh, but just really couldn't follow up. He was very kind of <sighs> reckless. Threw a lot of shots. He, he didn't really plant his feet too much. He, he just he looked awkward in there. And Walt Harris, to be fair, it was a, a bit of a scrappy fight. It was a fun fight to watch in the crowd, um, being there live. But um, I thought East could have possibly won that fight, and he kind of let one go a little bit there. I think the athleticism of Walt Harris really kind of was just the deciding factor over that one. But he's got an, another kind of guy coming in, his second fight in UFC, Curtis Blades, also coming off a loss at uh, UFC, I think it was Croatia he fought in, against Kurt, uh, Francis Ngannou. And Ngannou is just, we've all known 
Uh, we all know what Francis Ingano is about now. He needs a step up in competition. But Curtis Blades, I think, in a few years will be a good win in Ingano's record because this guy, I think he's got a lot of potential. I thought in the fight with Ingano, he showed a big chin, big heart, took a lot of big shots from Ingano. Never seen much of his wrestling, which he does have, he does have in abundance. And I think that's where we'll see it in this fight here. I think he can stand with Cody East, don't get me wrong, but heavyweight division, he can go out at any time. I like Curtis Blades to really use his wrestling, his grappling, take this fight here to the ground, where I think he has a superior advantage down there, and really just beat Cody East up. Can he get a first round finish? I believe he can. I think if he uses the wrestling, puts Cody East against the cage, and uses some nice combinations to, to get him against the cage, and then want, use that wrestling and just shooting him and take him down, I think he can stop him here. I like Curtis Blades, I like him early as well. Um, I like him via TQ in round number one. If not, I can see it definitely in round number two, but my pick will be round number one. Light heavyweight division with Jonathan Wilson against Eon Kutilaba. Uh, I'm a bit all over the place with this pick as well here. Um, I was pretty confident in picking Jonathan Wilson against Luis Enrique De Silva, and then he showed a little bit of, kind of bad fight IQ and... Just kind of overreached on his shots and, and got taken out after he he hurt Henrik De Silva in that one as well. But then he, he let it go and he got knocked out himself there. So that the fight IQ has got to improve there. I do like the camp he's fighting out over Milena MMA. I think he's a really good fight camp. I think if he fights smarter, he can definitely win this fight. He's definitely the more technical boxer, uh, the crisper striker. Uh, throws st shots straight down the pipe. And he has... Um, got decent grappling once he gets it in the right position if not he's a little bit he leaves limbs out there and he leaves his kind of head in bad positions when he, when he is going for those takedowns Ion Kutalaba came in very tough fight against Misha Surkinov in his debut but this guy just swings reckless punches this is why I think that Jonathan Wilson can definitely have success with these straight crisp shots straight down the pipe if he can do that and use a little bit of head movement and just get his shots off and pivot to the sides and get his shots straight down the pipe. I think he can hurt Kutalaba. But I can see Kutalaba catching Wilson with something as well. Um, I will not be putting, I will not be betting in this fight whatsoever. I'll be staying well clear because I think that Kutalaba has a chance. My pick will be Jonathan Wilson. I just think he's the more rounded, better fighter than what Kutalaba is. Not confident in the pick though. I'm going to go Jonathan Wilson. Um, we've seen that Kutalaba kind of gassed in the third round against Mr. Surkinov and got taken out. I think that this could be the same again. I'm, but I'm going to go a late TKO victory in round number two for Jonathan Wilson. Not confident in the pick whatsoever. Nate Marquardt against Tamden McCrory. Last fight here on UFC Fight Pass prelims. Another fight I'm just not 100% sure of. I mean, Nate Marquardt, I don't really think the guy should really be fighting that much. I think he's had some really tough knockouts recently showed that against Thiago Santos. Now, we know Thiago Santos can do it to anybody. We've seen what happened with him at the weekend. I thought he would absolutely start Spicely, and he got he was the one that got starched himself. So, um, yeah, he's took a lot of big shots over the over his career. I think his chin is definitely gone. If McCrory can find the right positions in this one and use those long, that long reach that he has here, he could possibly take out Nate Marquardt. I think if it was to go to the ground, it'd be quite competitive. I think McCrory is... The better fighter down there, but Marquardt is no slouch whatsoever. Tamda McCrory, on the other hand, I mean, he's coming off that loss to Christoph Yotko, and he just got bulldozed. Bulldozed inside the first minute in that fight. And Yotko has that at his disposal. We haven't really seen too much of it in the UFC, but he showed against Tamda McCrory, and um, he's got himself uh, a fight, I believe, at the, at the end of the year in Sao Paulo, which is going to be a really good fight. I can't remember who's against off the top of my head. I just looked but um, forgot who it was against. But McCrory, I think he's just got the little bit of advantage. <sighs> I don't really, I can't really say that he's got the advantage in most facets of the game because Marquardt is a well-rounded fighter. I think the longer the fight goes on, the more it comes into Tamden McCrory's wheelhouse and he can um, put Marquardt against the cage and maybe work for a takedown. But he has to be careful because Marquardt is a pretty good clinch can throw some nice knees up in that clinch and um, he, could, he could hurt McCrory as well. He could come out and just throw some big shots at McCrory and he could catch him like Yotko did and take him out. 
My pick will be Tamden McCrory. I think he's going to find a way to find this, put it to the ground, and use his jiu-jitsu skills to 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 get a decision uh, to get a submission victory maybe in early round number three this might get a bit slow pace it goes further on but i like mccrory's gas tank if it goes into late to early round three uh, so my pick's going to be tam dan mccrory via submission early round number three still not particularly confident in that pick either moving on to the welterweight division keita nakamura against elizu zaleski dos santos this is pretty much your uh, striker versus grappler very much so. Nakamura being the the grappler, Zaleski dos Santos being the striker. He's finished a couple of fights in the UFC. Has Elizu um, dos Santos did so against Amari Akhmedov. Kind of got away with one in on that one because I think he was losing that fight, but he did manage to find his find his way off his back against somebody as decent as Akhmedov is at keeping you down there. Um, showed. Pretty good skills to get off his back. I didn't think he had that, in all honesty. And once it got back to his feet, he he just hurt um, Akhmedov with some lovely shots there and got a third round TKO victory. Keita Nakamura is a, a fun guy to watch, I must admit. Doesn't offer a hell of a lot on his feet, but once this guy goes to the ground, uh, you're in deep, deep doo-doo down there. You can, he, he will put you in a lot of positions, awkward positions, where um, you're going to find it really tough to get yourself out of there. I mean, against Tom Breeze, he did that. Um, Could have won that fight. Probably should have won that fight, in all honesty. Then last time out against um, Kyle Noak. Beautiful submission in that one there. But Nakamura has shown deficiencies on the feet. I'm really wanting to pick Zalesco de Santos, but I think that just the veteran savviness of Nakamura is going to be enough to pull him through here. It'd be interesting if it goes to the ground because I think that Nakamura could definitely submit De Santos, but I think I think De Santos is going to find his chin at some point. But my pick will be Keita Nakamura via decision. Another 50-50 fight, well, 60-40 fight for Nakamura. Uh, not overly confident in the pick because I think De Santos can catch him with something. But my official pick will be Keita Nakamura via decision. Staying in the heavyweight division. From earlier on, we have Shamil Abdurkimov against Walt Harris. Uh, now, I was over the moon for Walt Harris getting that win at UFC 197. Uh, I saw him walking around the, the MGM there, and you could tell that this that fight meant a lot to me. We really wanted to get that UFC victory. I think it was his second stint in the UFC, and uh, the crowd were pretty pumped up for him when he won that fight as well, which was, was cool to see. A nice finish. Um, a very athletic heavyweight. I mean, he um, pretty light on his feet, throws some big heavy shots. I don't think he sets them up too well, um, those shots, but he has some power. Um, but I just feel that Abdurrahimov here is a little bit more well-rounded. I think he's a lot more, a little more technical. Not really a finisher, per se, for a heavyweight, which is something... You don't really see too much because there's a lot of... Obviously, the heavyweights are supposed to finish fights, and a lot of them do, so Abdurakimov doesn't really do that. But I think his technique will shine in this fight here, and I believe that he he's a more well, well-rounded well fighter as well, so he can probably take the fight to more advantageous positions for himself. I like him to use that technical striking to get in, get in close, maybe get in the clinch, um, tie up Walt Harris and look to work for a takedown and take him down there. I'm going to go Shamil Abdurahimov via... He could stop this one. I'm going to go a decision in that one as well for Abdurahimov. Featherweight division, we have Hakran Diaz against Andre Touchy Feely. Um, really want to pick Andre Feely in this one. And I might do so. I'm a little bit... This is one of these fights I'm 50-50 on because Hakran Diaz is a very tough opponent to face it for any fighter in the UFC and he's got those skills to he can make easily grind you out just kind of like Darren Elkins does he can easily grind you out for three rounds solid and that's always something you have to kind of keep your eye on is is that um, just the grind that he can put on you I thought in the, the fight with Swanson he showed a little more of his striking don't think it really it, Cub Swanson was winning that fight. I think I think it was 29-28, definitely across the board. But he showed his striking a little bit more. Before that, he beat Levan Makashvili. 
um, which the fight was kind of tailor made for him there. And before that, he beat Darren Elkins, who's the king of the grinder. So that shows you that this guy can put the grind on with the best grinders in that division. Um, before that, he lost against people. I think he loses to people with really good kind of wrestling skills. Ricardo Lamas was one of those. Nick Lentz was another one of those. Uh, do I think Andre Feely has got that? I'm not too sure. Um, Feely's coming off that loss. He came off a beautiful knockout first. Let's get that out of the way. Against Gabriel Benitez, the head kick. And we saw what Benitez is all about against Sam Cecilia a few weeks back. Really good fighter. And then he came out against... He had a tough out against Jair Rodriguez. I thought he did very well for the first round in a minute. I thought that Jair definitely won the first round. But Feely wasn't too far away from really putting himself into that fight. And if it went into maybe the late second, early third, he maybe might have come into that one a little bit more. But he got caught with that massive flying switch kick and uh, got put to sleep there. I think he's looking for... for this would be a big victory here against Hakran Diaz. Because I think Diaz literally just sits outside the top 15. If he's not already in the top 15... No, he'll not be in the top 15. He sits just outside it. Feely could really put himself into maybe close to that top 20 in that division. Um, but do I see him stopping the takedown? I don't. I really want to pick on Rufilia because I am a fan. I'm going to go Hakran Diaz. I think the grind's just going to be too much for Feely. Coming in here on short notice as well. I'm going to pick Hakran Diaz for your decision. Light heavyweight division. We have Luis Enrique de Silva against Joachim Christensen. Uh, I think this is another one of these striker versus grappler fights. Christensen being the grappler. De Silva being the striker. We saw. I said we we're talking about earlier on Jonathan Wilson against Enrique de Silva. Um, both took a lot of shots in that one but the one thing that the Silva has got on his side is very durable and very very tough and can take shots like he did in that one um, I like him in the feet in this one I think he could put a bit of a beating on Christensen he trains out of um, fights out of Copenhagen in Denmark saw some of his fights he beat Matt Nunes, uh, Max Nunes a few fights back and that's some fighters that people over in the UK might know a little bit more on um, as he fought in Bama and stuff so I like the Silva in this one I think if he can stop the takedowns he will put a hurting on Christensen I can see Christensen actually taking him down um, and maybe getting a round off him here but I just I like the Silva to land at some point and, and hurt Christensen so I'm going to go Luis uh, Enrique de Silva via TQ in round number 2 moving on to the main card and we're starting off with the last samurai Luis Smolka against the newcomer Brandon the Baby Assassin Moreno. Um, we'll start with the newcomer here, Brandon Moreno. Um, some of you might know him now. A lot of people are not watching the, the season of the Ultimate Fighter, Fight for a Champion, where the winner will face Demetrius Johnson, where it's 12, uh, 12 or 16 regional champions, 16 regional champions, flyweight champions from all over the world are fighting here. And Moreno was on that show, and he lost in the first fight of the series against uh, Alexandre Pantola, who is a very good fighter. I'm looking forward to seeing him in the UFC in the very near future. And uh, I thought Brandon Moreno gave a good account of himself. I mean, against a guy like Pintola, who is very well-rounded, got unbelievable jiu-jitsu skills, he hit Pintola with some big shots on the feet. But you can see where his, his um, deficiencies lie. And that was definitely on the ground there. And Pintola just worked on him, grinded on him, and eventually got the finish there. I actually saw this Moreno guy. I saw his fights about a year ago, but I actually saw him face to face uh, in Vegas for 197. He was there with uh, Henry Cejudo, and uh, I think it was an open workout day. They were working together, and I know that Cejudo was always styling him, but um, I mean, he was just happy. You could see like the big lights. He was there in the MGM, just being around the kind of UFC. He really liked the idea of that. But he's got a tough fight here. I mean, Lewis Smolka. I, I will say, Lewis Smolka against Sergio Pettis. I know I'm a Pettis fanboy. Uh, I think that I think that was a tough fight for Smolka, but I think it was a good fight for him. Um, and I, I was a little bit up in there who I thought would win that fight. I was probably leaning towards more of Smolka. But Smolka is a guy coming through in that flyweight division. Looks phenomenal. I mean, he looks really, really good. I saw him with my own eyes in Dublin against Paddy Houlihan. That was... I mean, to change on the fly from just being a, a, a normal fight in a card to being the main event um, and not really face any pressure with it and just go out there, perform, 
took out Paddy Houlihan, just kind of dominated him really. Neil Siri, I know that Siri was uh, ill through that week, and Siri gave a good account of himself, but Lewis Smolka, once again, was very dominant. Um, and they're tough, two tough fighters to, to get through. Ben Nguyen, he took some shots in that fight as well and gave some back, but still got the finish there as well. So, um, this is the guy who's ascending to be a top guy in that flyweight division, and I think that he, this is a good fight for him. It's going to be a showcase fight for him. He, he will want to, as long as he doesn't get too reckless on the feet, he should win this fight if he fights smart and takes it to the ground because I don't think he can knock out Moreno but I definitely think he can submit him and his top game is so heavy and his transitions are so good and just the, he's, you can see his, his mind when he's on the ground and he's looking for that next position and what he has to do moving his body in certain ways to get, get to that next transition he's phenomenal to watch on the ground it's something I was watching in his fights there earlier on today I'm going to pick him via submission in round number 2 I think Moreno's got a round on him at least I know he's coming in here on about a week's notice, 10 days notice, but I think he can get a round out of Lewis Smolka, um, but I can see this being dominant for Smolka. Round number two, submission. Lightweight division, we have Joshua Buckman against Zach Otto, a newcomer at the UFC. Zach Otto doesn't impress me in the slightest. Um, my boy Mike Biggie Rhodes um, beat him in his first pro fight many moons ago, but this guy really doesn't impress me. A hell of a lot if I'm being honest with you um, hasn't really fought anybody of kind of any significance and um, I mean he's fighting guys I actually couldn't believe this when I seen it he's fighting guys with 60 losses on their pro record now I know and this was six months ago this is what I'm talking about like if this was two or three years ago and he beat some guys with decent records and he has beaten some guys with winnable records I mean six and one was his last fight against um, uh, Craig Eckelberg, I think his name was. And he he was very dominant in that one, in all honesty. Um, but I think it was G. Ellis. Like, this guy's got a 13-60 and 60 record. It's a weird, weird, weird fight to take. And I know this Ellis guy's fought a lot of... He's kind of got submitted like 30 times, but he's fought a lot of UFC fighters. Colby Covington, I think, was in there. I mean, he beat guys seven and one, six and one record with his last two, last two records. I just, I don't see very much from him, and especially against the, the kind of veteran work that Josh Buckman and the people that he's faced. He's faced decent, decent fighters in that division. I mean, Paul Felder uh, lost to Patrick Cote, lost to Don Young Kim, uh, beat KJ Nunes. The experience is on his side here. I like him. Could he finish a fight? I think he could. Uh, I might go a TKO victory for um, Joshua Batman. I might go round number three. I think that Otto could maybe get to round number three, but I think he will take a beating and Batman will get the finish, if not a dominant decision. Cool main event of the night. We have Ill Will Brooks against Alex Cowboy Oliveira. Uh, Will Brooks, I just think he's so underestimated and so underappreciated by a, a lot of fans out there. And I think that he, he's about to, to make a name for himself in the UFC. I think he's going to quietly make his way up that division. And he's going to beat some really good fighters. Showed the UFC jitters against Ross Pearson, but that was a good win against Ross Pearson. Especially coming in pretty short notice as well. Showed a really great jab. He's got some pretty decent... Um, Technical striking, really nice job, really pretty, good footwork as well. He, he plants his feet quite, um, plants his feet to really get that job off really nicely, and it, he's got the wrestling skills there if he really needs to take it there. Um, I see. I just think he's underappreciated. I think he's going to make a name for himself very very quickly. Got a tough fight here against Alex Oliveira, but I like it. I like it for Will Brooks. I think that I mean Cowboy. I think he faced Cerrone earlier on in the year and when he got that step up in competition he really didn't make much of it. I think Will Brooks is on that level with Donald Cerrone personally. I think he's up there. He could definitely be a top five lightweight like Donald Cerrone. I think he could I honestly think he could beat Donald Cerrone at one fifty five. So my pick is gonna be Will Brooks. Um I think 
a finish would be really, really nice here for Will Brooks. Kind of really put his name out there. Will he get it against Alex Oliveira? I'm not too sure. I'm going to go Will Brooks for a decision. I'd really like to see him get a finish, but I think that he'll get a very dominant 30-27, maybe a 30-26 decision. Will Brooks will be my pick there. And the main event of the night. This is one of the fights I've been looking forward to in this back end of the year. John Hansestone Lineker against John the Magician Dodson. Now I'm seeing, uh, when I heard this fight was announced, sorry, um, I've seen a lot of people really underestimating John Dodson. And I think that's really, that's not a good thing to do against John Dodson because he can, he's so fast that if he hits you, he can hit you with a couple of shots and you could be out before you know it. We saw that against Manny Gamburian in his last fight. The one thing, I mean, I'll put this out here. The only fighter this guy's lost to in six years, twice, albeit, is to Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, the best fighter in the world today, without a doubt. And during that time, the fighters that he has beat, he's beat John Moraga twice, Zach Makovsky. I don't think he looked great in that fight, but he won the fight. Um, Juicy Farmiga, top, top guy in that flyweight division. Tim Elliott, always dangerous. Knocked out TJ Dillashaw. I know that was a few years back. But he's beat legit guys. And he's really getting underestimated in this fight here. And I think that... I, I think it's just the way John Lineker is merking fools at the minute. He, against Michael McDonald. The shots he was landing. I mean, this, this guy plants his feet. And you can see the opponent like to thinking, Uh-oh, here we go. And he throws those shots. And he goes high, he goes low. And once he hits you once, you are done for. There, there is no coming back against this guy. I really, once he has you stunned, you are, you're pretty much done. You're pretty much done against him. And that's that's something that John Dodson has to really watch out for. Is the power that this guy has. But I think that John Lineker has to watch out for the speed and the power of what John Dodson has. This guy can be in and out and be, be away from you before you're even throwing shots and you could be looking at the lights doing so. Um, and that's what he has to, that's what John Dodson I think has to do here. He has to get in and out, land his shots and get away. Where John Lineker I think has to cut the cage off and really try and put John Dodson's back against the cage and take him out there. Um, one thing that I'm a little bit worried about is John Dodson getting into later rounds we saw against Demetrius Johnson. Um, that he kind of faded after round number three and if he does that against John Lineker um, John Lineker we don't know what he's like once once he goes into five rounds um, because we don't see him get there so he might kind of slow down a little bit but I think a lot of people are underestimating John Dodson here I'm seeing a lot of my fellow YouTube prediction guys picking John Lineker as well I think that's a smart pick I just feel more confident picking John Dodson I think he's got a lot of skills there I think he's also got Greg Jackson um the master tactician there, so he might have a, a really good game plan coming in here. I can see him getting off, maybe winning the first three rounds against John Lineker if he doesn't get caught and just pot shotting him and um, just keeping this in his feet, kind of one twos move away, one twos move away, and just miss those big power shots of John Lineker. Um, but say I am very wary if this fight goes into later rounds because all it takes is one shot from Lineker at any point in the fight let's put it that way and he can take you out but I'm going to pick John Dodson here um, can I see him finishing John Lineker I really don't see it Lineker's a tough SOB and um, will be in your face the whole fight as long as John Dodson can keep his his back off the cage pot shot John Lineker use his speed use his more He's definitely the more athletic fighter. Use that athleticism. He will win this fight, I believe. So, pretty confident in John Dodson. I really shouldn't be because John Lineker can just one shot and you're out. But I'm going to pick John Dodson in this spot here. And uh, move himself up them, those bantamweight rankings. So, John Dodson via unanimous decision for me there. Maybe a 48-47. So, that's my pick for UFC Fight Night 96. I'll be back next Monday, I think, or maybe this Thursday, depending on what work, um, work does. I will put my picks out for UFC 204 from Manchester. Michael Bisbin against Dan Henderson 2. Uh, if any other people from the UK are going to be there, I will be there from Wednesday through till Sunday. If you want to go for a drink, just chat some MMA. 
let me know through Twitter at WillMartin708 or on here, and I'll happily meet up and talk some fights for you guys. Um, so yeah, that will be my next fight card prediction is UFC 204. Go for all the good guys that I was talking about at the start of the podcast. Like, comment, and subscribe if you can. And I will see you all very, very soon for my next prediction. Enjoy the fights when they come around this Saturday evening.